Does hot water freeze faster than cold water? The obvious answer seems to be no, because all else being equal, the hot water first has to cool down to the same temperature as the cold water, and then do everything the cold water has to do in order to freeze. So it must take longer, right? Well, not according to the Impemba effect. This effect is named after Erasto Impemba, who in 1963 was a Tanzanian student making ice cream as a school project. The students were meant to boil a mixture of cream and sugar and then let it cool down before putting it into the freezer. But worried about not getting a spot, Mpemba put his mixture into the freezer immediately after boiling it. And returning an hour and a half later, he found that his mixture had frozen while his classmates had not. Mpemba was intrigued by this phenomenon and eventually enlisted the help of a physics professor, Dennis Osborne, to investigate the effect using cream and also water. Now they managed to replicate Mpemba's finding and published a physics paper stating that warm water does indeed freeze faster than cold. But Mpemba was not the first person to observe this effect. It dates back at least to Aristotle, who noted, the fact that the water has previously been warmed contributes to its freezing quickly, for so it cools sooner. Hence, many people, when they want to cool hot water quickly, begin by putting it in the sun. Sir Francis Bacon wrote, tepid water will freeze more easily than water which is altogether cold, and Descartes in his essay on meteorology states, we can also see by experiment that water which has been kept hot for a long time freezes faster than any other sort, because those of its parts which can least cease to bend evaporate while it's being heated. So the observation that hot water freezes faster has a long and illustrious history. But what is the physics behind it? Well, there are five proposed mechanisms related to frost melting, dissolved gases, supercooling, evaporation, and convection. First, frost melting. When placing two containers of water in a frosty freezer, the frost acts as a thermal insulator. And so around the cold beaker, the frost won't melt, but around the warmer beaker, it will. And this creates a conductive layer of liquid water around the base of the warm beaker, dramatically increasing its cooling rate. Now this may be the case for some observations of the Impemba effect, but other experimenters have been careful to insulate the base of the beaker from the freezer and still claim to observe the effect. So hypothesis number two is based on dissolved gases. One known difference between warm and cool water is the amount of dissolved gases. There's more in the colder water than in hot. So as warm water cools down, gases are constantly dissolving into it. But this is an exothermic process, so it should actually slow cooling down rather than speed it up. Differences in dissolved gas concentrations might play a role together with the next proposed explanation, number three, supercooling. Water is meant to freeze at zero degrees Celsius, but in reality, it may become significantly cooler than this before freezing occurs. Supercooling happens because ice needs a nucleation site, like an impurity or an air bubble before it can form. The thinking is that water that's initially warmer may experience less supercooling and so freeze before the cold water, though the reason for this is not entirely clear. Now, although some experiments have found that differences in supercooling cause initially warmer water to freeze faster, the results are very inconsistent, and it's basically impossible to reproduce even in the same lab at the same time. Which is not that surprising, considering supercooling depends on something as tiny as a speck of dust or an imperfection in the beaker. And when you think about it, the freezing process itself is problematic, not only because of supercooling, but also because it requires a lot of energy to be given off. To change the state of water from liquid to solid at zero degrees Celsius requires removing the same amount of energy as cooling it down from 80 degrees Celsius to zero. So when you think about it, the time taken for water to cool and freeze should be dominated by the actual freezing process rather than the time taken to cool the water to zero. And this is why a lot of the investigations of the Impemba effect have ignored the unpredictable freezing process and focused solely on the time taken for a sample of water to reach zero Celsius. So ignoring freezing, what could cause hot water to cool faster than cold water? That brings us to number four, evaporation. If you start out with two beakers containing the exact same amount of water, one hot and the other cold, well, the hot one will lose more water molecules through evaporation than the cold one. So once it reaches the same temperature as the cold beaker, it will cool faster because there's less water left in the beaker. But the reality is the amount of mass loss is typically less than 3%, and that's not enough to account for the very different cooling rates. Plus, the Impemba effect has still been reported even in experiments using sealed beakers. So the fifth and final hypothesis is convection. Water cools primarily from its surface and from the sides of the beaker, with the middle remaining warmer. 
So the colder water sinks and the warm water rises to take its place. This is convection. Now a beaker of warm water will experience larger temperature gradients and therefore contain larger convection currents. So even when it reaches the same temperature as the originally cooler beaker, well, it'll still have more convection and therefore it'll cool faster. In 2012, the Royal Society of Chemistry offered a prize for the best explanation of the Impemba effect, and they received 22,000 entries. But even so, there is still no consensus on what causes the Impemba effect, and recent research suggests that it may not happen at all. How is it possible that we still don't know what's happening with something as basic as the freezing of water? Well, here's what I think. People have witnessed warm water freezing faster than cold in real-world conditions for hundreds, even thousands of years. And a number of experimental studies appear to substantiate these observations, so you can't simply dismiss the Impemba effect out of hand. But the freezing of water is a more unpredictable phenomenon than most people imagine. And there are so many variables, it's actually very hard to ensure everything is equal except the initial temperature of two beakers. In 2016, a rigorously controlled study was performed and scientists could find no evidence of warm water cooling faster than cold water. In fact, warm water took measurably longer than cold water to cool to zero Celsius, just as you'd expect. But they showed if you varied the placement of the thermocouple, the little device used to measure temperature, by just a centimeter in the same experiments, a slight Mpemba effect appeared. The scientists reviewed all the other Impemba studies that provided sufficient data and showed that the reported effects were within the margin of error if temperature measuring location varied by just a centimeter. So there is no real evidence of an Impemba effect. Warm water does not freeze faster than cold. And this is not just an esoteric finding about a quirk of nature. If the Impemba effect really did exist, it would have significant implications for thermodynamics. It would mean that water molecules have a kind of memory of their earlier state or states. And that would mean having to update thermodynamic tables to include not only what the temperature of the water is, but also what it was before. So maybe we should be thankful that the Impemba effect, at least under carefully controlled conditions, does not exist. Because if it did, that would make thermodynamics a lot more complicated. Hey, did you learn something from this video? If you did, then please hit the subscribe button and I will make more videos like it. This channel was supported by Google's Making and Science Initiative, which seeks to inspire people to learn more about science and pursue their science goals. One of my science goals is to create more videos for you about discoveries both past and present that reveal something awesome about the universe. So if you wanna see more videos like it, then like this video and subscribe to the channel.